Humor is a human necessity. Even the Germans have it. Well, at least in theory. But mankind has not been telling jokes for millennia for no reason at all. It is something we do because we need to. We need the distraction. We require an escape from an at times harsh and uncaring world. We need to laugh. Listen, there is two things that I can't stand. One is racial prejudice, the other is bloody jinx. And there's two things I can't stand, and you're both of them. But this invaluable relief increasingly is being denied us. Comedy today is all but dead, confined to ever more closely policed spaces, all due to some ideas of political correctness about which none of us were ever consulted. Instead, hectoring busybodies have bullied everyone into accepting their edicts on what is permissible humour. We're told this is to protect us from offence and from bad attitudes being spread. Good morning, madam. Are you being served? Just having a look. So is he. <laughs> but nothing can hide the fact that the people behind all this curtailment have no detectable sense of humour whatsoever. They lack something in their soul. Wanted in the communications room, Mr. John Walker. <laughs> Johnny Walker? Yes, from the Scotch office. So laughter is dying out in our age. It is being regulated and suppressed out of existence. Any quip, any joke is deemed somehow offensive and thus not permissible. My horoscope said I was going to get a new position. <laughs> but I interpreted it quite differently. Everyone is perfectly aware that some of the greatest comedy ever devised could never be made today. Nobody would ever broadcast it. Some of the leading talent of the past would not even be hired. They don't fit the present day criteria. Ladies and gentlemen, in the highly unlikely event of loss of power on all four engines, then in all probability, we'll go into the ground like a fucking dart. Their faces don't match the imperative for diversity and inclusivity. Yes, the Soviet embassy's on the line, Sir Humphrey and Mr. Smirnoff. <laughs> and their material would be too problematic. Watch out for them bathhouse cleaners. Why? Load of trusty puffs work in the bathhouse. <laughs> oh, they were funny, but these are secondary considerations these days. Oh, north, we, we had, that was ours, we were, we, Lancashire, we were the roundheads and the squareheads, and down south they had the cavaliers. They're the ones with the velvet knickerbockers and the lace ruffs and the long wavy hair right down to their waist. They're patron saints in Francis the Sissy. Well, <laughs> Here in the UK, people have even been taken to court over jokes. The jesters of the world are being silenced. Blackmail. Are you describing me or my proposal? <laughs> what is left of mainstream comedy is now bland, cumbersome and awkward. Stodgy descriptions of how this or that person is insufficiently inclusive in their worldview and how funny that supposedly is. But hardly anyone cares for it. Oh, I do feel queer. Some would try to reason with us, explaining what we ought to find funny and how it would be better for society if we did. These people tend to ascribe great morality to politically correct humour. It's supposedly greater virtue making up for the fact that it isn't funny. But as individuals, we don't really have any say over what does or doesn't make us laugh. It's either funny or it isn't. Tonight, we look at Belgium, and in particular, Belgian eating habits. We have with us the Belgian chargé de fer, <laughs> Le Comte de Frou Frou. <laughs> Hercule, we've heard that there are some extraordinary social habits connected with eating in your country. Is this true? Mm. They may seem extraordinary to you, <laughs> but to us, they are, how say you, small potatoes. <laughs> Reason doesn't enter into it. Well, my family, I imagine I'll always be the only gay in the village. Good night to you. Sure, we don't like humour just to be a veil for bullying, but in turn, few, if anyone, claiming offence and hurt at mainstream comedy were ever really bullied. Are you one of them? <laughs> really, it, it was very lonely on the Russian front. <laughs> In that regard, humour is based on human experience. Over the ages, we have found things that tickle us. Bawdy 1970s humour by Benny Hill or Frankie Howard is not that different from the ancient Roman comedy plays by Plautus. 2043, 
Just as we, over time, discovered proportion and form which we found pleasing in architecture, we also discovered what made us laugh. We added ever more layers, wit and sophistication, some cultures by far exceeding others in this field, but we kept on returning to what at heart is funny, silly and ridiculous. Chamberlain, with his white staff, gives the sign for the procession to turn and for the fanfare from the trumpeters. <laughs> Any of today's pious attempts at humour are not somehow granted greater value due to some superior virtue. The joke works or it doesn't. The only measure of it is whether it's funny. Actually, there's one 747 that belonged to nine different African airlines in one month. They called it the Mumbo Jumbo. <laughs> Comedy is supposed to be chaotic, a high wire act that can go wrong at any moment. It takes risks in order to get a laugh. She's got a tongue like an electric eel and she likes the taste of a man's tonsils. <laughs> but this is no longer allowed. Comedy is supposed to operate in precise boundaries, overseen, edited and curated by the high inquisitors of our age. Above all, comedy is supposed to be safe. A safe space to everyone, no matter how thin-skinned, no matter how much they seek to find offence. But at its heart, comedy is neither about causing offence, nor about safety from offence. It's about truth. Bloody dar for letting them in here in the first place. Think I carried a lot of them. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I have been to Pakistan and met your people, and they are the nicest, the friendliest, the most cultured, the most sensitive people it has been my privilege to meet. I don't like Pakistanis. <laughs> Especially West Pakistani. <laughs> Bloody what? <laughs> and when being truthful, there is no such thing as a word you cannot say. The impermissible word, the banned word, no matter what. All that we know is that he's an enigma. Humphrey, I mm. don't care for that word. <laughs> enigma? It all depends on context. Comedy is context. About revealing something within a context. And an intelligent comedian with an intelligent audience can make truth and context go a long way. Is he one of us? <laughs> no, he's one of them! Please, do not tell everybody! The knowledge that the great masters of the craft would today not be allowed to prosper within the industry should tell us everything we need to know. Please forgive me if I appear down in the mouth this evening, but I've just had some bad news. I... Tomorrow it's the mother-in-law's funeral. <laughs> She's cancelled it. <laughs> Comedy is increasingly ruled over by boring people whose favourite colour is beige, but who make up for such dullness with militant fervour. These bastards are in control. They're the beiges, the beigeists. They're all fucking beigeists. And that's why you've got fucking person hole covers in the street. Fuck you! It's a manhole cover. Fuck off! and take a rotten, shitty language with you. And if you want to be called ask some other fucker, because I'm not doing it. They've read a book once, or have been taught vacuous piffle at university about how any statistical difference in society is evidence of discrimination, and that any joke about any one or any group is tantamount to violence being enacted on such. Disgusting! Never have I seen such a display of blatant puffery. <laughs> Never in all my life! We need to reclaim our humour. We need to regain our laughter. Ah, oh, Lawrence of Arabia. Wanted in the communications room. Oh, good, um, who is it? Napoleon. <laughs> which means first we need to readily, unashamedly, laugh at that which we find funny. Whether they wish to permit us or not. No, uh, you just wait here. I won't be long. 
Fine, fine. We can laugh about any culture, about any subject, about any context. There are no limits. For to limit humour is to limit the human imagination, and anyone who would seek to limit that we know to be our sworn enemy, as well as a born fool. Um, atheists. Atheists? Over here, please. You must be feeling a right bunch of nitwits. <laughs> And finally, Christians. Christians? Ah, yes, I'm sorry. I'm afraid the Jews were right. <laughs> we need to celebrate what it is that makes us laugh, and the comics who do it. And we need to defend them against the inevitable attacks they will face. Communists, Maoists, Trotskyists, Neo-Trotskyists, Crypto-Trotskyists, Union leaders, Communist Union leaders. <laughs> you see? Atheists, agnostics, long-haired weirdos, short-haired weirdos, vandals, hooligans. <laughs> Football supporters, Namby Pamby probation officers, rapists, papists, papist rapists, <laughs> foreign surgeons, head shrinkers who ought to be locked up, Wedgwood Ben, keg bitter, punk rock, glue sniffers, <laughs> play for today, squatters, Clive Jenkins, Roy Jenkins, up Jenkins, up everybody's, Chinese restaurants. Why do you think Windsor Castle is ringed with Chinese restaurants? <laughs> We need to realise that comedy is an integral part of our culture and that we won't let it be moaned and bickered out of existence. You realise the sort of people you go to attract, don't you, Jimmy? Thugs, bully boys, psychopaths, sack policemen, security guards, sack security guards, <laughs> racialists, packy bashers, queer bashers, chin bashers, pasha bashers, anybody bashers, rear admirals, queer admirals, vice admirals, fascists, neo fascists, crypto fascists, loyalists, neo loyalists, crypto loyalists. <laughs> You really think so? I thought support might be difficult. <laughs> we should not allow them to eradicate laughter from the world, which is what these bloodless, miserable cretins are in the process of doing. But let's end this in style, shall we? Proving there is truly nothing about which we cannot laugh. He is no lesser than the late Bernard Manning, Britain's infamous blue comedian, on two Jews meeting their end at the hands of the Gestapo. Two Jews about to be shot by the Gestapo, Amy and Ivy. Stood there. Any last request before you're shot? He said, uh, can we stand behind the wall? <laughs> said, you cannot stand behind the wall. Stand still! The Navy stepped forward. He said, you dirty German bastards. Fuck you and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I mean, he says, don't cause trouble. That's all from the Sabbath Pass for now. Thank you very much and goodbye.